All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, I made a video recently where I show the stern of a yacht with the ESIS man written on it, it lit up at night, and, it, and you see it switching on. And uh, I got a lot of uh, questions about how I did it, so I thought I'd make a quick video, show you how to do it. Obviously, this was on my ESIS man channel, um, and if you want to see that video, I'll put a link in the description. But what we're going to do is we're going to be using uh, we're going to be using Photoshop, or, or if you've got another app that you use to do photo editing, but I'm using Photoshop and Final Cut Pro. Um, you can do it in iMovie if you don't have Final Cut Pro. What I'm going to do, you can do in iMovie. And uh, Photoshop, uh, you're going to need moderate knowledge of Photoshop. Or you, Obviously, you can follow this guide and it will help you, but having some knowledge of Photoshop will be helpful. So we're going to start off with this image. Oops. Just want to close that to be tidy. I'm going to start off with this image. So what I'm going to do is first, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this name, and to do that we're going to use this tool here, which is called the clone tool or the clone stamp. Now what it's going to do is it's going to give me this circle, which basically gives me an idea of the size of the area it's going to clone. So basically, what the clone tool does is it takes if I want to if I want to make this part disappear, I'm going to take an area over here and I'm going to place it on top of here to make it look like that. I'm basically coloring over the top of this. Now, when you select this tool, you can come up here and you can change the size, of the diameter. See, it's gone smaller now, or I can make it bigger like this. Now, you've got to be careful with the size because the bigger you go, the quicker it is, but also it's going to start taking things from other areas that you don't want to do. So select your size, then you're going to press the Option key or the Alt key on your keyboard. If you've got a Mac, it's Option. If you've got a PC, it's Alt. You're going to press that. When you do that, it's going to... Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is what I always like to do when I do this is I always make a copy of, of the layer uh, just in case I mess up so I can just delete it and start over. So I've, I've created a copy and then I've turned off the base layer, which is the bottom layer. So as they go up, you know, as, as they lay them on top of each other, you can imagine them as clear sheets of paper on top of each other. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start to clone. So we're going to press the Option key. We're going to select by clicking the mouse. And now, now it's going to show me how it's going to look when I start to cover. And then I start clicking. You don't want to hold down the mouse button and move the mouse. You want to keep clicking. And as you, as you move, once you're in the position you're happy with, then you click. That's the best way to do it. If you just you can hold down the mouse and move it around, but you you uh, as you move, you see the the cross will move with you, and you don't want that. You want to be selecting really as you move. You want to keep selecting from a blank area, so you get a nice blank thing. If you go too close, because if I start moving along like this and it comes too close to here, we'll start copying this text up here, which we don't want. So just keep doing this. And I'll take it, take some from over here, and then we just want to blank that out so it's all gone. Don't worry too much about the light. You can see some light leaking here. Uh, don't worry about that. So we're just going to cover this. Like I said, don't get too upset about it. it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to cover all of this area in a minute. We just want to get rid of. Whoops. We just want to get rid of the original part, so we can make it look nice. All right, so what do we do next? So now we're going to select our text tool here, and we're going to put down on here, and we're going to type in what we want to appear, right? So then we're going to move it into place. So that line there designates it in the middle. Make it approximately the size that we want. And now we're going to change the font. Now I used a font called Hemi Head, just this one. And then what you what I'm selecting this cross tool for is because, is so I can treat this like an image. So when it's when uh, I have the text selected like this, I can increase the size by using this tool up here. But it's easier to click up here and then press Command T, and then it gives me this. And then if I press, or the, and then if I click on the edge, I can increase the size to what I want. And then I'm going to always center it and make sure it's in the position that I want it to be in. Now I can press enter or return and then it disappears those lines. 
So uh, yeah, I think I'm happy with the size, maybe a little bit bigger. All right. All right, so what we're gonna do next is we wanna, we wanna make this look a bit more realistic. So we're gonna add a drop shadow to it. So what we do is we come down here to the layer and we right click. Now, what, what you'll notice here as well is, uh, before I do that, is you'll see here that well, um, in the layers here, you'll see that the eSysman layer has been created. When I clicked on the on the text tool and, and typed it in, it created a fresh layer. So it's all separate. So I can turn this stuff on and off. Now, what we want to do now is we want to right click on there and go to blending options. So uh, the first blending option we're going to use is the drop shadow. Now you can see immediately when I clicked on it, it's added a drop shadow on here. Now, these two, these well, all these tools will affect what the drop shadow looks like. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm, I, when I change the, the distance, you can see it's creating that shadow. If you go too far away, it looks unrealistic. So we want it to be far enough away from the from the uh, from the background that it gives it the impression that this is stick. This is actually not on the back. It's it's got, you know it's sticking out, and then the spread. You can see the chain the, how it changes the spread. Um, it gives it more depth and then the size will make it bigger or smaller so we don't want to go too crazy with it we want it to look like it's protruding from the stern of the vessel uh, so that's that's that now the other thing I want to do is uh, the color of this is not the color that I want it to be it's in it's in this blue color so I want it to be like a, um, I want it to be a bit darker than that so like a gray color so I'm going to go back into the text and then I'm going to select this gray color here. All right, so, okay, so I'm just gonna make that text a little bigger. It's a little bit small. I'm gonna go 111.5, ah, that's better. That's more like the one I've done before. Whoops, just trying to get it in a good place. You can use the up and down and left and right arrows to move it small amounts. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, I'm happy with that. All right, so what, what we need to do uh, to create the animation that I do to, to, to give it the appearance of it turning on the lights, we need to make two images. This is the first image. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go to, we can either go up here, file and say save as, or we can press command shift and S on the keyboard, does the same thing. And then we're gonna save it. Uh, we're gonna save it as a JPEG and we're gonna save it to the desktop and put it in here and we'll click save and then we'll say maximum now that's the first one saved now what we want to do now is we want to create the second image which is going to be with the light on so to do this we're going to use the first um, layer with the name eSysman on it we're going to use that and we're going to create a copy so we grab it we click on it we drag it down to new and then it, now you see it's created a new uh, layer with the same data as the first one. If I turn it off, you'll see it changes, becomes slightly darker because there's two one on top of the other. And we're going to go right click and blending options. I'm back in here. Now we're going to go to drop shadow. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use the same drop shadow, but we're going to change the color. So we go up here where, where it shows the color, we click on that and it opens this color picker. Now you can select all different colors on here, but uh, the best way to get the right color match, because what we want to try and do is we want to match the colors of the lights that are on the boat, right? Now, when I slide off here, you'll see it changes into a little uh, dropper. And what, we, what we're going to do is we're going to sample the color from here. I'm going to click and then you see it changes. Let me click OK. And now we've got a color that is effectively the same as those lights. So it gives the impression that it's lit up, but it still doesn't look very realistic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play around with the settings in here to get it to a point that we like. So we're gonna say the spread, we're gonna just, you just play with these things and move them around and the size of it. See, we're gonna make it bigger and make it more blurred. And there we go, it's more, it's more um, faded now, so it looks a bit more like the, the light. If you look at the side over here, the way the light fades out at the sides, it kind of looks the same, doesn't it? We're also going to turn on Outer Glow, 
uh, and the outer glow, if you see, the outer glow adds a glow around the edge, but we want to change that color too. So we're going to go to the same color and it just adds the intensity and it gives that impression of the lights uh, on the boat. Now it might be, if you think it's too intense, you can bring that down uh, you, or you can take it up. But it, when you take it up, it starts to look a bit unrealistic. So you want to keep it so it's faded around the edge. And then you get it to a point where you're happy. You can go on the size. You can make it bigger or smaller. Now, then we click OK. Now, it doesn't look like the way I've done it. And there's a reason for that. We've got two images, remember? One on top of the other. Now, when uh, you, want, you want to keep that uh, distance, that it, it kind of looks flat at the moment, even though it's lit up. So what we can do is what we can do is we can drag this layer underneath the other layer. Of the original one in the dark and then it adds on top of the light it adds that separation from the stern of the vessel now it looks like the light it now it looks like the the um the name is is protruded off and it's shining the light back onto the back of the vessel uh, and that's pretty much it now we want to save this so we want to do uh command shift and s and then we're going to save this as yacht stern on and we'll put it in the same place save that and then we'll close this all right so what we want to do now is we want to switch over to final cut pro i'll create a new project and we'll call it stern light click ok now if you remember in the one i did when you watch it there's actually some uh some noise in the background which adds makes it look a bit more realistic than just having the you know just having those images so what we're going to do is we're going to drag these images onto onto here drop it in here now these are the images i've just created so we've got the two images drag that drag them down into the into here into the timeline so now what we've done is we've we've uh, we've made it bigger so the zoom in to make it easier so now we've got in the timeline we've got two images Oh, we're going to have two images. We've got one image of the light when it's turned off, and then we've got the one where it's turned on, and we drag that down and put it next to it. Now, we've got this. So what we want to do is we want to create the impression that it's switching itself on, right? So we're going to lift this up. We're going to bring it in about halfway like this. So that gives us uh, the ability to play with this. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to give the impression when I did the the animation I made it I used the sound of a, a fluorescent tube light turning on now that's not how they work but I just wanted to make it look a bit more realistic like the lights were turning on so I did it that way to, just to give the effect of lights being turned on so what we're going to do first of all is we're going to zoom right in so we can't zoom in anymore that's as close as we can zoom so when I go here like this, it shows me one frame at a time it's showing me. Now what I can do is I go along like this to one frame, and then I'm going to press Command B, and it's going to slice that. And then I'm going to keep doing it. Oops. Let me make sure I've selected the top one. Command B. Command B. And I'm just going to keep doing this. You have to keep selecting. Oops. You have to keep selecting the top one. Uh... Now I'm going to miss a few, just to make it a bit more appear a bit more random. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to add some sound effects, and I need to use this to so I know where I'm going to be turning. So the noise of the light turning on, I'm going to have it. Uh, in, uh, so I'm going to make the the light turn on based on the sound that I'm going to use. All right, so we want to uh, we want the light to switch on go from this to this we want that to happen in sync with the with the sound we're going to use right so if, I, if memory serves i took the sound from down here towards the end right so this is the sound just going to select that little bit there and then we're going to drag that down into the timeline it's very quiet you can hear it now when i'm doing that so, I'm going to zoom out a little bit, see if we can see it. 
bring the volume up so I can just see the, the lines and the thing here. So that's the noise we want to use. So we're going to make it smaller, we don't want it to be too long. And then we're going to drag that over here. Let's say we'll put it like this. So we've got the peaks here, so we'll put little markers. There, there, there. So those are the peaks that I'm going to use to make the light flash on and off. So I pressed, by the way, I pressed the M key to get these little markers to come up here. And this is going to help me to figure out where I need to cut. All right, so I'm going to cut some of this like this and like that. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to make that sound replicate it, but I'm going to delete some of these. So you'll see what will happen now when I run this, see it flash. So I'm going to take out every other, oops, every other one here. And then uh, maybe this one here. So let's see what that's coming along with. So it's doing it nice. So we want it to be, I'm making it not equal because I want it to look a bit, you know, haphazard when it's turning on because otherwise it looks too perfect. So we want to delete some of these out. Take that one out and this one because this is where the marks are. And then let's see how we're looking now. And that's it. So, so now we've got the sound uh, and it's looking pretty good. Now the only thing that's missing is it's out at sea, right? So we need a bit of waves and stuff like that. So we've got this graphic here that I downloaded and we're going to drop this on. We want this all the way along. Now let's play it. Now it's a bit loud, so we want to reduce the sound. Say 10. Bit too low. Right, it's still a bit flat though, isn't it? So we're going to take some uh, flag flapping. So we imagine that the flag is moving around, even though it's not. And we'll drop that right down as well. Start with some background noise. And I've got this noise, seagull noise, which we'll drop in. And again, we'll, we'll drop the sound down. We don't want it to be, uh, we don't want it to be too loud. So we'll make it, and then we'll bring that in. We'll cut that there. Get rid of that. And that's pretty much it. So uh, let's have a look. We'll play it from start to end. And there you have it. And that's how you do it. All right, guys. So thanks for watching. I hope you've uh, found this interesting. And you see how much work goes into one little thing like this that is just on the screen for a couple of seconds. Uh, you imagine a whole video that, that's like this. So it is a lot It is a lot more work than you think. But I hope you enjoyed it anyway. I hope you find it interesting. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. And, uh, and I'll catch you next time. All right, guys.